Hello everyone. Welcome to Informatica support videos. This is Akshya Srinathi Kripa from Informatica GCS. In this video, I will be showing you on how you can make use of IACS REST V2 connection as midstream in a mapping task. The agenda for this meeting would be a quick introduction to IACS REST V2 connection creating business service in IACS, web service transformation. I'll also be showing you a quick demo on how you can make use of REST V2 connection as a midstream in IACS mapping task and a few reference articles. REST V2 connection. One can make use of REST V2 connection to interact with web service applications that support REST API. We can make use of REST V2 connection as a source, target or midstream. In this specific video, we will be focusing on how you can use REST V2 connection as midstream. When you want to use REST V2 connector as midstream in a mapping, you will have to first create a business service for the operation that you want to perform in the web service application. You can then associate the business service in a web service transformation midstream in a mapping to read from or write data to the web service application. Say for example, you can use resv2 connector as a midstream transformation to perform put operation on a web service application. Let us assume that you have a Swagger file based on which a REST V2 connector is created and is tested successfully. So after this, what we'll have to do is to create a business service. To define a business service, you might need to log in to your IACS org Go to Data Integration Console and click New, Components, Business Service and then click Create. Enter the business service details and select the REST V2 connection that you had created. Now select the operation you want to use from the web service. When you configure a business service, the values that appear in the operation list are based on the operation ID that you would you would have specified in the Swagger file. You have an option to look at how the request and response fields would look like. Once you select the operation, save the business service. Web service transformation. Now, in order to make use of the business service created earlier, you will need to make use of a web service transformation in IACS mapping task. What is a web service transformation? A web service transformation connects to the web application as a web service client to access, transform or deliver data. One can use the web service transformation in the mapping designer to construct a web service request and to pass the web service response. On the response mapping tab of the web service transformation, the request generates a response structure for the specified REST operation from which you can select the elements that you require in the output. Here, the output groups and keys generate automatically. The response structure displays the fault group by default. The fault group contains the request XML, error code and error message. The fault group is displayed for the new business services. Now let me show you a quick demo on how you can use resp 2 connection as midstream transformation in IACS. I have now logged into my IACS org. 
here I have a recipe to connection created for retrieving the activity log entries using Informatica's REST API activity log resource. I have provided this bag file for this recipe to connection and as you can see the connection tests successfully once you are able to test the recipe to connection successfully you can now move on to the creation of mapping task using which you can consume this recipe to connector created i have now navigated to the data integration console as discussed earlier, the first step would be to create a business service where we can select the recipe to connection created and specify the operation that we are trying to make use of. To create a business service, click on new and go to components business service create. Name the business service. Now select the connection, recipe to connection, which you want to use in this business service. Once the connection is selected, click on select operation. Now click on select. As you can see, it now lists the operations that are available based on the recipe to connection that we have chosen in this business service. I'm selecting the operation. Once the operation gets selected, you have an option to look at the request and response. For this, click on configure. Here, you would be able to look at the request fields, response, response fields and how the fault would look like. Once you have verified these details, click OK and save the business service that you have created. We have now saved the business service successfully. Now let us create a mapping in which we can make use of the business service that we had created. In the source transformation, I am selecting the flat file in which I have the details of the values which are to be passed in the request. As you can see, these are the values which are present in the flat file. I will be passing the values present in this flat file to the web service request. Once this source transformation is configured, you can drag and drop the web service transformation in the mapping designer. In the web service transformation, you can now choose the business service that has been created. Once you select the business service, make sure that you choose the operation that you would like to perform in this web service transformation. In advanced section, you have an option to configure the pagination parameters. As you can see, 
once you select the operation you have the option to view the request mapping and the response mapping the values for this request are passed from the flat file that we have created in the source transformation i am now doing the field mapping now the request request mapping is done now moving on to the response mapping you can choose to uh, map which all this in uh, data you are looking to load to the target as you can see here this web service response has four output groups fault group root response and entries if you are looking to capture the details of all these groups you can have four different targets in which the output of each group would be directed to in advanced section of web service transformation you have this option to increase the cache size for web service request and response the value that you mention here would be in kbs in case the request or the response made by the rest api would be huge in size you can increase the value that is set here by default now i have completed the request and response mapping so now i am mapping the output group let's say i am mapping the output group entries to the target flat file i am creating the target at run time say if you want to capture the fault code entries as well you can include one more target transformation and route the output of fault group here i'm uh, creating one more flat file at run time that would capture the entries of fault group now save the mapping the mapping is now validated and saved successfully i am now associating this mapping with a mcd so that we can run the mapping the mapping configuration task is now successfully created now let me trigger this mct that we had created to look at the job run you can go to my jobs page the task has now completed successfully and as you can see it has loaded the 10 entries of activity log rest api in the target file target entries
as there is no fault group we see zero records loaded to the fault file to verify this you can have a look at the target file that got generated this is the target file that got generated I hope the demo was useful and it gave you a quick understanding of how you can make use of Raspi2 connection as a midstream in IACS. For more information, you can always refer our Informatica knowledge base portal and you can also have a look at Informatica help documentation on Raspi2 connector. We would love to hear back from you. For any feedback or reviews, please mail us on supportvideos at informatica.com or you can also tweet us on InfaSupport. Thank you.